Welcome to Living Mosaic, a project of the Spark of Humanity Network. My name is Martha Holden. I'm a member of the Spark of Humanity Network. The Spark of Humanity Network is based on our understanding that there is a spark of humanity in each one of us, no matter what. Even though you may not want to believe it, there is a spark of humanity in each one of us. It cannot be extinguished. It cannot be put out. It can be defended, and generally is. It can be baffled, and often is. And it can be distorted, maybe inevitably is to some extent, I think, sometimes all three. But when you, through your spark, find your spark, connect with and affirm the spark in someone else, that strengthens their spark. And that seems to erode the defenses and clarify the bafflement and release the distortions from the inside. It is very good. At the same time, that action of reaching out and connecting with their spark to strengthen their spark also strengthens your spark. And that tends to erode your defenses and release your distortions and clarify your bafflement. So <clears throat> we cannot transform someone else unless we are willing to be transformed ourselves. So part of the deal is getting in touch with our willingness as much as we can and doing what we can to at least be aware of our willingness to expand our willingness. So this project of living mosaic is based on another understanding, which is that to this world's pain, heartache, distress, agony, come up with your own words, there is a solution. And that solution we are envisioning as a living mosaic of which we are each unique and essential bits. So this program has been about recognizing that and allowing ourselves, encouraging ourselves to let go of those things which get in the way of our finding our place within the mosaic, getting into our place within the mosaic. It's like the mosaic being alive is breathing, inhaling, exhaling. And the mosaic is just, actually, I just think of it as inhaling, but drawing us toward, toward our place in the mosaic. We don't need to figure it out. At least for me, I know the worst thing I can do is try to figure it out. The best thing I can do is to let go of my preconceptions, my habit, habits of response, many of my attitudes, and let myself be drawn into where I am needed within the mosaic. So the two works are intertwined. So today, we're going to be talking about small. Sometimes, I know I'm not, probably not the only one, I have this sort of tension between grandiosity and terror. And I want to do this thing. I'm going to be doing this thing. I have this idea of doing this thing. Ah! Oh. And then, bah! No, it's too scary. It's too big. I'm not, so I'm not going to do it. We get frozen, so we become... We resist being drawn into our place within the mosaic, or we get confused and want a really big place in the mosaic. <clears throat> so that's, we're talking about small in terms of that, that our role in the mosaic is actually very small, which can be immensely comforting. But it's also small 
and it's also precise. There's a saying, the devil is in the details. Well, the devil, we're used to thinking bad things about the devil, but the devil is the tempter, the accuser, that which separates. So the details are where we really get to pay attention. Are we really in integrity with our purpose? Are we really deeply paying attention to that still small voice inside us calling us to do this or not do that or just shut up for a moment, be quiet for a moment. So it's small in both two senses. One is the task that we're called to is very small. It may be very deep, but in terms of exposure, it's small. At least that's my sense and my experience, that I get in more trouble than the battle between the grandiosity and the terror. And if I remember, it's just small, just small, just hang, hang into the small. It's all, it's all fine, there's nothing, nothing huge. And that sort of it's a, almost a contrary perspective on the word small to say it's small and it's the small things I need to be paying attention to when I am to speak, when I am to remain silent, when I need to be paying attention, when I need to remember, oh golly, um, the speed I move at, those each incremental moments are small in themselves. But each one can be an expression of our willingness to um, just use it in one word, one way, our willingness to let our sparks grow and strengthen, our willingness to be part of this process where through the strengthening of our sparks, our defenses are eroded, our bafflement is clarified, and our distortions are being released. So it's a, it can be a moment to moment that small and also precise where we're paying attention, and I just, oh, it doesn't matter. You know, I can get by this. I'm, this is casual. To tune out, which is one of my favorite things to do, which is why I'm talking about it in part, so I can remember it. Okay, so I'm going to take a couple minutes of silence here and to let that settle in. Then if there are questions or comments, fine. Otherwise, we'll, something will happen and I'll keep on prattling on. The word essential has a couple of shades of meaning that I have to keep in mind. I have thought of essential as being crucial, absolutely necessary. It's essential that you do this. It's essential that you don't do that. And that's one. There's also a a school of meditation where the, the person who developed the form of meditation is relatively recent, um, you know, within the past couple of centuries. They talk about his essential teachings. And when I first heard that, you know, don't tell me his teachings are necessary, crucial, whatever. And they're saying no of the essence. So looking at that, that our role, 
our belonging, our role within the mosaic is essential. Not only is it required in order for the mosaic to be whole and be fully alive, for its life to be fulfilled of the mosaic, but it's also essential in the sense that it's of our essence. It's our truth. It's who we truly, and some people really love the word authentically, are. When we are in integrity, it has to do with integrity, it has to do with precision, it has to do with truth, and that place where our truth resides, which we may not be familiar with, we may resist having anything to do with, we may be afraid of, but there is that, it's, I, this is all language, a spark of humanity is a metaphor, it's all metaphor. We may all be metaphor, that's one way of looking at this whole earthly conundrum, is it's a metaphor. So that essence of us, who we essentially are, is it's our essence, the truth within us, the, the, the nub, the seed, the tone of true within us, and it's also that's which is crucial, totally necessary, required, not for our fulfillment, our becoming whole, and also for, for our place, for us to fill our place within the mosaic. So we can look at that either way. I know I'm incredibly abstract. I can't help it. Maybe I could help it. But I'll, I trust that I will be guided. I will become aware if I need to be less abstract. Some people really like abstract. Some people are fed by it. So, and we have hope for next year of having a companion program that is much more concrete. So we can all breathe, we can all exhale with, whew, we don't have to put up with that anymore and get into something that has more, stronger feet, feet on the ground rather than head in the clouds. Up, oh, we're waving. Is that someone want to speak? Yeah, hi Martha. This is just Hold on, let me get my earphones on here. Yo. This is Danielle. Hi Danielle. Um I was particularly struck by <clears throat> the discussion of um huh, the, the discussion of the littleness that we're having today and the idea of the the contrast between essential or the apparent contrast <clears throat> between essential we have an essential role and at the, on the other hand the humility that's required to inhabit that essential role um i i know that like some other people i have had the habit of when i find some way that i can be a benefit to to a friend, to an acquaintance, that that um, starts out with a humble kind of, oh, here's, you know, I want to help you. And mm -hmm. that somehow my um, my artificial halo lights up over my head. <laughs> and I start telling myself, oh, isn't it wonderful how what a good person I am? And, um, the, you know, the, the distraction of that, the, dis the, the continual cycling of the distraction between feeling like the groundedness of finding my little place in a larger a larger thing and uh and then being pulled out of that place by my ego mm -hmm. so that was that's one thing that i was reacting to and then another abstract thing is that as i was picturing 
Because mosaic is an, it's a great word. I'm not trying to detract from it. I know you'll talk about the dance or the music. All of those things work. We we have an, we have a role within something larger. But for whatever reason, those little things that we used to make when we were kids in art class, where we glued different kinds of beans onto a, onto a sheet of plywood or whatever, so that we created a, I mean, it was a mosaic, but it was out of beans or peas or whatever, because we needed different colors. And I started picturing one of those in my head and and all those things sprouting, like somehow that idea that somehow these things aren't stones like mosaics tend to be, but they are something with life within them. And that uh, that idea of, of something turning into a, a whole other thing, a chia pet, rather than just a bunch of collected uh, scattered beans that make this image. All of that popped into my head. So it's not particularly useful in terms of it provoking discussion, but it is what what my mm -hmm. mind made of what you're talking about. Thanks, Daniel. Well, of course, it provokes discussion for me, maybe nobody else, because it is a living mosaic. And I think it's important to to uh, be aware of that and that, that it's, and our place is living. And we don't get to stay the same. Oh, I found my place in mosaic. I'm set for the rest of my life. Yay me! Um, no, it's not. It's not the way it is. And so, so be, yes, the the beans and the peas are dancing, as well as sprouting. And you know, guess who's not in charge? Me, you. You know, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a natural, may I say, organic process in which we get to participate. And we're components. We're, I'm not going to say essential, we're necessary components within that dance, that sprouting, that little garden patch, that big garden patch, that cosmic garden patch. So yeah, and I, I appreciate the uh, artificial self-generated halo lighting up. Um, and. I think that's training. I mean, thank God, you, if I can use that word, you, know, you have a spiritual practice. I have a spiritual practice, and that's part of it to become aware of when I when I feel the light start blinking on in that little artificial halo. Um, I've schooled myself. I don't like the word training, but I have. I've schooled myself <coughs> to say. Yeah, you know, if I, you know, whatever I want to thank, you know, the universal spirit, the you know, whatever, thank you, whatever, thank you, what is, thank you, reality, thank you, that I have an opportunity to fit in better. Just to I, I have an opportunity to serve your life. I have an opportunity to participate in your life, because that's that's where. In my experience, that's the only place that joy is, true joy is, is when I'm participating in life, the, the big L, life. Um, and that, and the f more I am right-sized, the more I am humble, the more deeply I participate, the more truly and effectively I just participate is the smaller I let myself be and sort of like a going through a sieve, you know, being able to get through the sieve and not get hung up or a colander, you know, get hung up there so I can become truly. Um, and that sort of experience get, helps me get used to being the size I am, I'm supposed to be in all its little precise tininess. So it's, uh, yeah. It's, Anything more to say? Because I'm about done with responding to what you said last time, so you might as well. <laughs> Nothing to say. Oh, my earphones aren't saying anything anyway. Um, OK, yeah, that's two, two very important points. And the letting, just letting go of my own preconceptions of where I'm needed, <clears throat> of what I'm supposed to be doing, of 
actually, usually it's what they need. I think I'm going to help them. In fact, I think I'm going to save them. I think I'm going to make it all right for them. I'm going to rescue them from themselves, from each other, you know, just watch me fly, you know, or my little cape, whatever, um, to let go of all that and to ground however, I think we all have different ways of grounding, grounding in, I have a spiritual practice, I think also if we, if we, if we learn to ground within our spark of humanity, or however, whatever metaphor we want to use, and just allow ourselves to rest in that, and know that as we rest in that, the more deeply we become accustomed to resting in that, with our full weight, mm, fully there, that, that somehow the life of the mosaic moves us, and forms us, and inevitably, I think, at least in my case, um, gently, although it may not feel gentle, you know, whittles us down to the shape and size that is needed for our particular place within the mosaic, um, on the board of plywood with all the beans and peas, and the, you know, in the, whatever the bed of the mosaic is in this particular imaging. So to really surrender to the process and to trust the process, to be aware, to accept that whatever comes our way, whatever confronts us, whatever we experience is, I, I love this, I mean, everybody else can hate it, but, uh, but I love it because for me it's true. It's custom crafted. It's custom crafted for us personally, individually. It's custom crafted for us to form us and mold us and shape and sometimes whittle us to get in where we're needed to be in the mosaic. So whatever happens, whether it feels really good or feels really bad or feels really like ugly or painful, we can't choose, we can choose to receive it as, as a gift for our formation, for, to help to be part of our becoming. And that's, and those things, to go back to small, those things may be very small. I don't like the weather today. Well, how about accepting it? It's just exactly what it needs to be in order for you to be reminded to return to your spiritual practice, to you know get out of yourself, whatever, but to accept it all as gift, every bit of it. So thank you, Danielle, for joining me in person and live and audible. And thank you all. Whenever, whenever you watch this, if you ever do. And thank you to the life of the mosaic. And thank you to the dear and beloved and talented and generous spirited folks of Orca. And the folks of the Spark of Humanity Network, our administrator, Rose Fisher, and the other members of the Spark of Humanity Network who are supporting this endeavor with their good wishes and vibes and maybe even prayers. So thank you all for joining us. <laughs>